Hello, this is Julia Davis of Yoga Teachers Forum and Finchy Yoga, and I'm here today with Maxine Levy, and we're going to be chatting all things pranayama. Hi, Maxine. Hi, Julia. Hi. Uh, well, the reason why we're chatting today is because Maxine has kindly said that she'll be running our pranayama session at the Yoga Teachers Forum on the 20th of May. And we're going to find out a little bit more about Maxine's yoga journey. So, Maxine, do you remember your first ever yoga class? That you're well, that's a good question. Actually, I do. I don't, I don't actually count it. It's so interesting. But I do. I was actually post-uni uh, living in London with, at a friend's place. And, um, it was, uh, and she said, oh, let's go to this yoga class. And I, and I went with her. So I, I felt very, um, I didn't know what to expect. So I do remember that. But I, I kind of don't count it as my real first class because I kind of went uh with somebody else interesting interesting okay so what about your second class well, <laughs> I, I that that was that sorry one was that a one-off and you didn't go back to that teacher? no I, I did i enjoyed it but i i think i think i'll tell i'll say what i felt about it i went and um yes it was unfamiliar it was unfamiliar i hadn't done i wasn't doing any kind of exercise or any kind of classes ever so it was my first time on a mat and my first time doing that so um you hadn't done a rose or anything. <laughs> I, no, I hadn't. Not at that point. No, I had after that, but not at that point. And um, I remember, I remember it. I think, I think what it what it showed me perhaps was that I I wasn't I hadn't set myself up to go, and it made a big difference. I guess I count the class when I set myself up to go. When I said actually I'm going to try a yoga class, so I guess I was more in it. So that's probably why I don't necessarily count it. I may have been there in body. Yeah. So you weren't somebody who. Um, was very kind of physical as a child and did gymnastics and dance and all of that kind of stuff. That wasn't. No, not at all. Uh, not, not, no, no, but I don't, I, not, no, no. I did, I did cycle around at university. I was quite fit. Um, cycle as in from A to B, not as in anything um, <laughs> hikey <laughs> or hilly, um, but yeah, no. A to B. Um, so, no, I didn't really start any form of exercise till way after that, um, yeah. once I was working in London. Yeah. actually and i did i lived in town and i joined the local uh fitness center i was in in in, in, in the town and um yes and i went regularly and i guess i used it so i'd never done that so it was in my 30s i went then i know, I know i'm only 21 but it was in my 30s <laughs> <laughs> when, you, when you went on your own to a yoga class yes what was your experience of that so, the, uh, so when I uh, so I first did yoga in the gym. Actually, I went as a sort of on the list of activities. There's there was step and all that, and then there was gym. So I went there, and I used it very much to uh, relax and stretch. So I was very much in the physical body to relax and stretch, and um, that's how I saw it, and that's what I got from it. Mm -hmm. So it was much later that I went to yoga, really interested in yoga. Um, and I'll, well, that happened. <laughs> I'll say what that happened. To cut straight to the chase, I was seriously, seriously ill um, about 20 years ago. So yeah. actually, I went to yoga um, as, well, this will help me get back on my feet. I had a, I had a tumor. So yeah. I had a serious tumor, stage four, serious stuff. So I had all this treatment. And after all of that, um, I was rec in recovery. And I thought, well, what can I do? So I, I went to yoga as a, a after having a recovery while recovering from cancer so that's when I first went to the class and I remember before I went to a class a friend actually did a class with me and I couldn't even go on all fours I was like oh I'm tired can I get up now yeah because I'd been nuked yeah, low yeah. Muslim, high chemo stem cell transfer they you know it was a, a veritable uh, a veritable thing so I was my body had been uh, gone into a trauma and then, and then I was in the recovery so I was using it very, I came to yoga as a physical practice to, uh, so as so many people do, to, yeah. uh, as, uh, to move, to yeah. move. Yeah. yeah. So from that you know, very vulnerable stage of yeah. your life, how did you transition from attending, you know, going from hardly being able to move and needing to sleep yeah. um, to getting to a point where you felt that yoga might be something that you want to share with other people? 
Well, it was very much that my journey started when I, I found myself. So my first teacher actually is our mutual friend, the wonderful Estelle Eugene, um, who um, I looked, went, made a phone call, looked at the British Will of Yoga website, where was the local teacher, and went to see her. And she was very um, supportive. So I was in a class of general class, and um, I started to go there. And then um, I went, I wanted more. So I wasn't working at that period. I had a very busy, active life. I was in the art world and then I was making arts documentaries. Um, so that all stopped when I was recovering from my treatment. And um, I went to try yoga in Primrose Hill. I signed up and I kind of went to all the gentle classes and I went every day. That was my thing to heal my body. So I, was, I saw Estelle and I went there. So I found, so the journey started whereby I just found this was a place I could go and relax and I don't think I quite understood perhaps till afterwards or maybe it dawned on me well it's, it's for the mind as much as the body mm. um, the, it was through the practice through the experience that uh, it sort of revealed itself to me I found myself this is where I'm going it gave me space it was going to a space where I could just be in the moment move my body and um, feel good mm. yeah uh, and after that, so I um, had all my treatment about, about about a year. I wasn't actually. In fact, I was. Um, so I went. I went there, and after about, I guess it must have been a year, maybe less. I decided I wanted to go on a yoga. I wanted to do some more yoga. Yeah. And um, I knew in my gut it wasn't a yoga holiday. I wanted. I wanted something <sighs> real. And that, that doesn't, that sounds awful, but I knew it was more than just going somewhere to relax in the sun. I yeah, wanted you want to, to learn to more. Spa. You wanted to immerse wanted to yeah. learn more. Yeah. And, um, uh, and I wasn't sure what to, where to go, what to do. And um, coincidence, if that exists, a, a, co a coinciding of an event of a friend of mine in Spain was at a particular health center and said, actually, there's a yoga teacher here whose teacher's coming from India and um you know why don't you that he sounds like a really interesting person you might be interested in that and it happened to be very very close to where i was going to go and stay in spain so literally it was the same town so i thought well that's good timing so i went there met this person who drove us we went to a pueblo blanco a white uh, village in spain and there um the person who was invited to come and teach was my teacher who's sri tavari who was a must have been at that point he's 85 now so 20 wow. years ago he was 65 I'm yeah. guessing something like that um so um met this person um and uh it was a very different experience from going to yoga class in London um I would firstly say it was a retreat from the perspective of going and doing a practice every day um was also an opportunity for immersion and also the the practices were different so classic it was my introduction to classic asana as well which is all a bit new um the asana was separate to the pranayama there was a lot um he would he would give um he would talk and so it was my first intro really to philosophy uh to understanding i didn't know mashakti from uh mulabanda i mean nothing really i didn't understand it so that what was interesting was that it was uh, questions about life and questions about existence and questions I guess I was asking myself um, and we all ask ourselves so it opened up a whole world beyond the physical into the mental body into uh, purpose and uh, I got interested I got interested um, and I found um, yeah I found I found he was a, a really special person very full of humility very uh very clear very simple and as a result of that i found myself he went to france twice a year at least um to give eight ten day workshops and i would go to france twice a year from that point onwards so that continued right from then right through to the fact when he last went to france which was something like um i think it was something like 2008 when he stopped and then i started going to india yeah so did you so, train with him as a yoga teacher? I did. So what I did is I, I, I went purely for practice. So the sessions was meditation, um, pranayama, asana, kriyas, the cleansing practices, and, and, and um, in beautiful countryside, and we would practice. I went to practice. 
what the course, the, the, the weeks I was actually doing were part of teacher training courses. And as I went regularly, after a certain point, I said to the person running it, I said, you know what, as I'm doing it, I might as well officially sign up for the teacher training course because I'd basically done the teacher training course. I would go anyway to these weeks twice a year. Um, and the, the theme may be the sutras or maybe it could be anything. It didn't really matter. Yeah. It was an opening into the practices. Yeah. And um, so I officially did it, um, the training there with, with, with Tivari. With Tivari. And it was very different because... As a, so as a result, after a number of years of practice, um, so when, how I came to, so I did that training. Um, I didn't, I, as I say, I did it because I was doing the training anyway. It was more to my, it was my personal practice. I was interested yeah, in my yeah. personal journey. And it was dawning on me in the back of my mind, what was I going to do? Was I going to go back to making arts documentaries? What was I going to do? And um, I should mention something major happened as a result of my treatment is that um, I was convalescing at the time. It was a year after a year of low, medium, high chemo, stem cell transfer, and a bit of radiotherapy thrown into the mix. Yay. And, um, so I was, within that year, I'd gone to, met Tivari, and also it was very easy to talk with him and go for walks and be given a personal practice and have your pulse taken and understand that all the treatment, all the asana and the pranayama is medicine. Yeah. And according to what the do what, what are the dosages that are going to be right for you, so to speak, and I've always carried that with me, that it's intensely yeah. it's personal. Um, the, a practice it's an intensely personal thing at the same time we're all human and it's not personal at all so yeah and so um I will cut straight to the chase and say I was not expecting to discover um that as a result of various various treatments um I got pregnant I cut straight to the chase there so that was a bit of a shock and at the time when the consultant said to me after they told me I was prematurely menopausal, let me tell the whole world that 20 years ago, after they, oh, this is UC, UCH in London, hospital, etc. my marvellous consultant saying, well, it's all happening and you're, I was in, I was in, um, I was there in reproductive medicine. I know my hospital number to this very day going in there. And I remember um, I wasn't particularly seeking to have a child at that point, though it would have been nice. It was more about living. It was still a bit of a surprise. So I, I assumed that, um, when the menstruation stopped, that was it. No, I discovered three months later, feeling a bit peaky, that no, it wasn't that I was ill again, because that were the symptoms when I had my tumor. It was actually, I was three months pregnant. Um, I had been on a very um, careful pranic diet, I would call it. I've been doing pranayama um, practices. I was eating carefully and all the rest of it. I hadn't done anything in particular. I was on quite a few, I was doing quite a lot of yoga, so, um, Yes, it happened. It happened. Um, and at the time, I was, the doctors were very, very surprised. I was surprised. I would say everybody out there, ignore the statistics, because... <laughs> you never know. Miracles can happen with the practice of yoga. <laughs> in view of my age, so it was absolutely not going to happen. So um, I, would, I wouldn't have said to my consultant then, but I would say it now. I could look you in the eye and say, now, after 20 years, I can confidently say, well, I'm sure it was the pranayama and maybe a few of the the gods were on my side but i can under, i can understand now um how it works how it can affect you on a cellular level how it can clear things and um my, my teacher I, I got pregnant on my teacher training and <laughs> I, I remember telling my teacher i should probably tell you that that's something that could happen down the pipeline i thought it was fair to tell her and she said brilliant we're just about to do the pranayama this is going to happen in, in a very short period of time and um she was right so maybe there is a magic in pranayama um that or maybe what you discover it's not magic at all of course on one level life is magic on another level it's actually a very specific it's a very specific science yeah. so the element of well actually if you understand how it actually works and what it's doing to your system and how you can work on that level well it's uh it's shifting things, it's detoxing the system, it's opening things up to the best of the possibilities. So you are actually, um, I'll call it psychic surgery. You're clearing a lot of blockages because you're going inside mentally. So yeah, it's just a very, very specific science. And wonderfully now, 20 years down the line, there is all this research out there on a fantastic website now. It's called Academia, Academia, I have to check that. And I'm getting all these papers in every day, which I absolutely love. I was pointed to it by one of my other great teachers, who's Dr. Nanda Balayogi, who some people may know, he's very on Facebook. He's um, 
a great, he's a medical doctor as well, as well as a yogi, and he's in the forefront of yoga therapy as well. And um, so there's all these papers out there. It's wonderful now and conversations out there compared to 20 years ago where there still were um, about these scientific results now. So it's, it's a good thing. Yeah, one thing. of the things I love, because I, Maxine and I know each other quite well, um, and one of the things I love about um, your yoga journey, which is very different to mine, is that you found a teacher. Would you mm. call a teacher your guru? Would you call him your guru? Well, interesting enough, Tivari, Tivari Ji, as, as a sign of respect and affection, would not, he would always say, I'm not a guru, I'm not a guru. He would not call himself a guru. So guru means into the light. So yeah. the difference between a teacher and a guru, you could say, or has been explained as, well, a teacher is going to guide you and a guru is taking you on that, is guiding you into the light. So there's learning techniques, there's learning um, informational learning, and there's a learning that is, call it a spiritual learning or a learning that takes you in that direction because ultimately, let's face it, it's a spiritual practice. Yeah. Um, it lifts the spirits, the shall we say. Yoga lifts the spirits. So. Um, yeah. We can just keep it at Santosha, we can keep it at contentment, we can keep that word out it's all a bit, but it lifts the spirits. So, so maybe, that's, yeah. So maybe, yeah. So maybe he, from his perspective, he's your teacher, and maybe from your perspective, he's a little bit good. Well, I would say now that most definitely I have been um, very, very fortunate to have that guide. And I do often wonder, I would say he was, he's my, I would say my life guide. I mean, I'm very lucky to have, you know, I've got, yeah. uh, you know, very lucky. I, yeah, I feel very lucky because I would talk to him about, I do talk to him about anything, anything. And that's wonderful. It's very nice to have that conversation. He's a very natural, real person. So there's a, a side which is, it's a personal conversation. It's about life. I mean, yoga is about life. Yoga is not about the mat. It's not about talking about all the millions of techniques that um, we can use and they're effective. Yeah. It's really, let's simplify yeah. what's going on. So he's like a mentor and a, you know, guy. I would, I would use the word guru. I would use that, and I would. I, I'm very cautious at using it because he doesn't use it, and I feel yeah, that there's so many negative. I mean, I would say that I've had various teachers along the way, yeah. and there are lots of people who influence my practice and my teaching, but I don't have one guide, and I've never had a guru, and I felt actually fortunate in that because there's been so many false guides out there and I know people who've been tripped up by um Bikram and I know people who've been tripped oh yeah up by you know various you, know, you can almost pick a tradition and they've all got their CD is the word really so I, yeah so I love that I know you and that your guru experience is such an amazingly positive one well it is and I'm unbelievably lucky but I have to say the first time I, I remember seeing Tivari in Spain that first time there were people going to his feet and kissing his feet which I thought whoa no way this is so not me do me a favor not happening and he was like not wanting that and he absolutely to this day doesn't want that yeah um, I wasn't looking for a guru I wasn't looking yeah. I was um, I my path crossed with somebody who became a very very um very a, a great support and um I guess I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't looking for it because I, when I'm not, I don't trust people easily, well, in a certain sense, I'm not going to be, um, I'm going to, people have to really, I would say, um, I need to know who I'm dealing with before I will um, hand over any kind of, or, or share anything. So um, yeah. it's, it's not really my style, actually. <laughs> it's not my style at all. So it's kind of ironic, but I think as we get older, we realize that what we think isn't us is sometimes we end up doing all kinds of things. And I never thought in a million years I'd be a yoga teacher after my previous life and still there. Um, yeah. We are surprised. So We're how surprised. did teaching begin then? Do you remember teaching your first class? Well, um, so when I was well enough to work again, I was, had to make a decision about wh whether what would I do? Would I go back into making films, etc.? I was making mainly arts documentaries. And um, prior to that, I was in the art world. And I'm still working a few with some artists. It's works. I, I, I was, then I, I told you I had the baby. So it was like, now I've got a baby. And, um, oh, things start to change. The whole world changes. So we were, so you asked me how I my, took my first class. So I'll, I'll say I, my teacher training, I did a teacher training in London. So before my first class, just to say, I did a training at Tri-Yoga with Simon Lowe originally. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. So I had the training in Cavalier with Tivari G in, in France and it's very, very different and very different orientation in the sense that it was so much, you know, our trainings here are much more British style. We, it's structured. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's structured, you know, and I was educating the British system, you know, my degree, my master's, it's all, it's all based on a certain approach to learning and research and it's very thorough and very, very good, very good in many ways. The style in France or India style was much more um, experiential based, even though we covered a lot of information. It was fundamentally rooted in the informational base. It, it was a different approach. Mm. Um, so I did do the training here. I felt I needed that to be in this country as well. And it exposed me to a lot of other great teachers. And I, I did a lot of courses as well as I, for the first period of time, as well as training with Simon, there was yoga therapy with Mukunda Styles. I trained with um, Donna Fari, uh, Spencer. Me. I did a, a, an active course. Um, trying to think. Uh, Deshikachar. Um, I'm always very interested to learn and to yeah, yeah. acquire knowledge and um, trained with Uma Dinsmore Tuli and yeah. Francis Bars Barbara Friedman for pregnancy and postnatal yoga. Always hugely interested in the therapeutic benefits and coming from the healing perspective. Yeah. So when did I first teach was your question. Um, as part of that teacher training, um, I set up um, some small groups from home. In yeah. fact, I teach in my home to this very day, my home studio. Um, it's all cleared away and I teach here and locally. Um, so I started with those classes. I decided that I had to have yoga in my life. I had a baby and I couldn't go back into the previous life and also have the yoga and run and have a baby. I couldn't do it all. So I made a choice. Yeah. I decided I would do the yoga. So I decided... I just knew I, I couldn't survive in, the, in, my, in myself, in my mental, physical state, if I couldn't practice and be in that world for myself. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why I stayed in it. Uh, I, I did do some filmmaking for a begin, beginning and put Angelica in there, childcare and that, which was fine, but not fine. It was like in the world of television has changed. I mean, it was a very different world when at the BBC and then moving into independent companies. And the whole nature of the business was not conducive to the hours and pushing for projects until you have the projects. It's a, it's a different world that wasn't suitable, wasn't conducive to where I was at. I needed yeah. to ground myself. So I started with small classes and I was also a mum. So I did agree that with my husband, I know that's what I will do. And I started with small classes and built up slowly um, that way. And actually that's still what I do. Yeah. I I kept it. We have very similar, similar I lives, but for a reason I made a choice yeah. to keep it small. Yeah. I think perhaps from the world of um, having been in films and being in the art world, which was all amazing and big stuff and large projects, um, I wanted to keep it personal. Yeah. Um, I, I like the size. I like the size. I like the quality of um, the relationships with small groups and one-to-ones. I yeah. like that. Yeah. And I did do a phase teaching at gyms. Um, and there's, you know, I do, you, do, you do build up, of course, you build up a wonderful relationship with um, people in the room. Um, but I just moved into this realm primarily. So um, into this realm primarily. So that's kind of how it worked, how, it, how it's gone. And I guess um, on the outside, it might look the same, though my classes have increased in what I teach. On the inside, I hope that I've evolved in a certain way to share what I'm doing. So that's kind of how it is. I've kept it as a cottage. Well, if, you if, you, if you did the same thing within the context of the time we have on the map with our students for 20 years, we'd be, you know, beside ourselves. We, we, we do evolve because our practice evolves. So our teaching evolves, I think. I would say that primarily I feel, um, primarily I've been a student. I am a student. Yeah. Primarily. I say primarily at the, at the same token, I, yeah. Um, yeah, we're all on the same journey. And I, learn, always, <laughs> I'm always on the same journey. And I always laugh when I, we go to, I go to India now, we have a retreat and Tivaraji will say, I learn so much from my students. I can feel my eyeballs every time hitting the ceiling going, yeah, right. But actually it is so true. Yeah. For better or for worse, you learn from, well, well generally for better. Um, yeah. it, you, you learn all kinds of lessons and not just with the students obviously in life and uh, all it can do is bring a bit of humility and uh, yeah. we carry on. So I'm going to move over a little bit now because yeah. 
the subject that you've decided to share mm. with us in the Teachers Forum, mm. Pranayama. And Pranayama means different things to different people. Mm. Um, so what does Pranayama mean to you and what might that look like if we're sharing it with other teachers? Uh. Well, pranayama, we, we, it's managing the breath, I would say. Breath, breath work, managing breath. We can call it expansion of the breath. I like actually the expansion of the breath. Um, that may be through the stopping of the breath. So we can, we can translate the word, but then I think drilling down is life force, working with the vital energy. So that, I guess what it means to me is the, um, yeah, it's the, it's the, the internal states that we can access through the breath. And I feel it's all in the breath. Um, consciousness, breath becomes synonymous with consciousness as we practice. What so, what are you talking about? Well, in everything, actually, sitting here right now. I said to you before we switched on, I better breathe. I've never done this before. I'm going to breathe. So, in everything. Um, so, I think that it's also good not to get stuck on the word and knowing what you need to know. So on one level, I absolutely, um, I think it's been absolutely vital from my perspective to have been taught one-to-one -one with my teacher, but also in, in the group um, to know exactly, I think it's important to know comfortably what you're doing and how it feels in you. I think that's the priority to connect to the breath. And if it's just your inhale, pause, exhale, pause, so be it. Yeah. And to make that connection. And then gradually to work, to build on that from the experience of where that leads you. So I'm talking about the practice. I would say primarily it's about practice, 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 practice. And through the application, something happens. And that's something can be- Do you have a daily practice? Do you have a, or yes. a, so yes. what does your daily practice look like? Your pranayam um, daily practice? It, uh, it will be um, a series of preparatory practices, which are these are the ones I teach, which are basically practices. So you would, I would start with the Kriyas, which is um, the cleansing practices. So it yeah. could be Neti, Jalaneti, which is water up the nostrils or yeah. a tube. I read a lovely translation, which I've never seen before, flossing the nostril. I, I've never heard <laughs> that before. Up, I actually even said that in my workshop here on Sunday. I said, flossing. I thought, I've read that. But, um, you know, opening up the tube. So I would do, I do that in the shower anyway. Um, yeah. And sometimes I also, well, I would practice um, um, Voman, which is where you drink water and you clear the system out. So you're preparing the body. And that's actually very powerful for a mental state. The mental state just, phew, it really clears you. And um, you're overcoming the set, you're overcoming your reactive, your nerve. It's all, it's all a relationship with the nerve endings, the nadis, the phew, coming, going beyond the instinctive uh, react into centered so it's it's part of the practice and then going into some into pranayama so the preparatory practices for example which would run through would be Udiyan, um agnisa um sima mudra etc various versions of um brahma mudra various um practices which basically prepare the prepare the throat prepare the diaphragm prepare the body for um the breathe the breath to pass through and kapalbhati which is a kriya as well which is a cleansing practice yeah. um, so clear the system and then do maybe one or two pranayama, depending which ones I might do. So they're all, the, the brilliant thing about pranayama is that um, they all have different uh, medicines. They're different medicines with different dosages for what suits Surya Badan, you know, heating the body or cooling the body or just anulum vilum for alternate nostril breathing. Um, generally, I'll stick to maybe two or three ones that I feel I need on um, That's what I would do. Um, and it's such a natural state uh, to take you into meditation mm. because the mind is settled. Mm. But then all yoga is meditation and whether it's asana through, um, I would say so asana through, sorry, pranayam through asana, you could say now in the classic style, and I certainly I remember going, excuse me, 20 years ago, why don't you tell us how to breathe in our asana practice in, in the classic tradition? And that's because you let the breath find its way. Yeah. And what we tend to do or in the West, and not just in the West, but actually I do it, I do, I choose to do that because I, I'm coming from a place where I'm, I know why I'm doing it. I might suggest how to breathe because it's directing the focus. But yeah. strictly speaking, you allow the body to, um, you, you provide the body as an instrument 
and the breath becomes the guide to yeah. allow that breath to happen. So yeah. I'm very flexible and open with pranayama. I absolutely abide by, I'm appreciative of knowing exactly what those practices are, when you should use them, how they fit into the whole picture, there being the eight limbs, mm. um, how, how it's that perfect balance between the external and the internal, that pratyahara. It's just before pratyahara before it takes us into that internal zone and coming from the outside zone. But the, the application of pranayama, I would say, I would just say breath awareness, even. I broaden it out. So be very specific in my workshops. Generally, I teach very specifically what those practices are. So I feel that um, an undiluted approach to knowing what, exactly what they are and doing them gives you a firm foundation. Mm. On the other hand, the side that's important is it's quite an art. It's that connect with the breath. Let's not get dogmatic. Otherwise, yeah. then the ego is kicking in and it's like, boom. So, oh, I know that and I should know that or this or that. And you know what? You do your best, you leave the rest. So there's that balance between them. Um, yeah, so, and I think, I think there is a value to really knowing what those practices are and then yeah. choosing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, also knowing, knowing going back to the roots, because if you go back to the, tech, the original text and you understand it, it all, it all fits together as a, as a whole darshan, which is the word for a way of life. Yoga is described as a darshan. It's a practical yeah. philosophy. So yeah. it's all rooted in the practice of it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So my, my, my computer's pinging and people coming in. That's, that's the world we live in, isn't it? It's like ping. <laughs> And that's exactly why we love our Pratyahara. My dog's growling, you know, <laughs> it's all happening. He's pinging me. And you can't help, you immediately see somebody's in pinging me. So um, that capacity to go inside, uh, vital. I, vital. Love, I love the kind of feeling of roots that when I hear you talking about honey arm, I, I, I can feel your roots and I can feel your comfort with the practices that are part of who you are and what you do. I think that's really lovely. I wanted to ask, and your answer might be no to this, is, um, so I would say a few years ago, there was, a, there was the mindfulness revolution. And us yoga practitioners were like, oh, what is this mindfulness thing? Oh, it's the meditation, but it's been taken and separated from the moving mindfulness that we're used to and the, the pranayama, and it's there as a, Thing that they're calling mindfulness and now i'm seeing more and more breath practitioners and mm -hmm. do breath work have you come across people outside of the world of yoga who do, who do breath work and yeah quite a few of them obviously must google me and come to my workshops oh. and uh I, I the workshops i tend to do as i say my priority is to relate to where that individual is in where we are in our body but i also feel that i want to impart this tradition um, yeah. the yoga tradition at, in its undiluted form and and so I do do that that's that and then so people do come and I think that they see where they can place what they've learned and where it comes from so um, I try and make that connection clear I because I, I think you can teach pranayama in many ways but I, I'm choosing yeah. to teach it from the yoga tradition generally yeah. Um, yeah. which if I'm teaching if I'm in one-to-one -one with a with um, if I'm in one-to-one -one with somebody who's um, a yoga, a yoga therapy, um, who's in, in a cancer, somebody who's recovered from cancer. I won't necessarily talk about any of that, but they'll still get the practices. But in the workshop, I will talk about that. So people who come to that, I think that they have found it quite valuable to see where it, um, the link with mind, because of course it's there, um, has been very carefully codified through yoga. Yeah. And that is a value. It's not kind of just supposition. It's been very carefully codified and it makes life quite easy because we can use those structures from which to free fall. Yeah. Yeah. So we free fall with the practices. We also free fall with the philosophy, so to speak. It's there, the sutras for this, that means a thread. I mean, they're there to be discussed. They're there yeah. to be um, opened up. So if we can have a firm foundation and I feel um, having a firm foundation, it gives us that opportunity to, to, to move with it. It's yeah. there, it's a, it's a good anchor. Yeah, oh, I love that the breathwork community um, have found their way to you. I think that's lovely because um, I've come in contact with the breathwork community and it's really lovely. Some of the work they do is quite yes. different to our breathing world. Um, and it's lovely to see that, it's like to see them cross over. So the mindfulness world crossing over with the yoga world and the breathwork community crossing over with our breathwork. 
You mean, I think in life, these are all different flavors of the same ice cream. We're all searching, we're all looking. And there is the yoga tradition that has been very strong and has gone for thousands and thousands of years. But there are other routes that may well give the same results or different results. And I think it's very important to be open. Mm. Very important just to see where, what one area can offer and what another area can offer. And just be comfortable with what, what you're dipping into. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. I, I think it's, you know, I think when we start to, uh, my folders start tensing up at that. So when you start to think, well, this is the best and this is the only way I can certainly say, I can certainly, I, I can certainly say what's work, what, what I've seen works and what has worked for me and what has worked for many yeah. people. And that's what I'm, that's what I offer. And um, to be honest with the pranayama, I haven't particularly wanted to look elsewhere because I've constantly found, I've always said in the back of my mind, you know, if I discover along my yoga journey, whether it's the, the teacher or anybody, that something doesn't fit, I'll move on. Yeah. I have yet to find me to come back from any kind of teaching, certainly the ones I've been going to, and ever come back and said, yeah, well, it's okay, but it's only okay. It doesn't really apply to this. I've always found the world of yoga has, it's, it's such a root foundation that it opens up and covers everything. Yeah. So I see it that way, but I'm also very open and discovering to discovering what other people do. My only thought I feel quite into is only teach what you know and what you practice. Yeah. And if like any kind of psych, psychotherapy training, in fact, they, you will have to do it yourself anyway. So I kind of take that on. It's, I think you can feel when somebody's following a script. Yeah. And when they've actually, and I don't, I think you need to realize that it's not, it, you, it, there is that, that under element there, that, that underlying element of, call it authenticity or call it um there's some there's a there's a connectivity i think yeah. that comes from talking from about about the nature of practice yeah yeah so it's not just the information it's the process in fact is the goal as we know so if you couldn't teach spanish teach spanish if you couldn't speak it <laughs> if, you didn't, if it wasn't part of who you are so um, you know, most, most of the people I know who, who teach maths love maths, spend, spend their time playing with Stoke or whatever it is. It's kind of like, we, if we love and we embody what we teach and what we share, yes. Yes. then we're all going to enjoy ourselves more. Okay. Yeah. I, think, I think also what we're teaching isn't just pranayama, it's connecting to people and it's life. And it's a tool, it's a tool, it's a tool. Asana is a tool and it's not the end result. So we having that really clear, it's reminding ourselves that it's 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 our purpose. It's that it's uh it's it's about living life fully. And let's face it, if you strip everything back, it's all in the breath. Yeah. It's yeah. All in the breath. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for this, Maxine. It's been a really, really rich conversation, really rich. Thank you. Um so just to remind everyone, and um normally the yoga teachers forum is open to yoga teachers. But sometimes we share a practice that is more is slightly broader than that. So, for instance, when we were on our pregnancy events, um, they're open to doulas and birth practitioners in other ways. So, with this workshop, if you are a breath practitioner and you work with breath, and you'd like to come and join Maxine for mm, this afternoon, absolutely welcome. Then you'd be more than welcome to. The Wednesday afternoon events are all raised money for shelter, so all the profits from the afternoon go to the charity shelter. We ask people for a voluntary donation of £10. If you want to give more then please do. Shelter will love you. But if you feel that you want to give an, an amount that works for you, then you can do that. Um, the event that Maxine's going to be running is taking place on Wednesday, the 20th of May, 1.30 till 3.30. Maxine, outside of the Teachers Forum, um, which you can find at finchleyyoga.com and then the Teachers Forum section or Yoga Teachers Forum London on Facebook, where can we find you outside of that um, world? Where, where would you find Maxine? Not that far from you. Um, <laughs> info at maxineyoga.com is my website at the moment. Though it will all be changing. It'll be all in the breath coming up. Um, and so I'm based, I'm running class here in um, Temple Fortune, North London, Northwest London area. And um, otherwise I might be teaching abroad or I'm here and um, in, the, in the vicinity in this area. So yeah, people are welcome to come along. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you, Julia. Thank you, Maxine. Thank you.